Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready to comfort your daily bread? Oh, I'm so ready, praise God, because I'm expecting something today. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, let me share something with you before we go into today's talk, which is the continuation of what we're talking about. You know, someone is thinking, why must I ask God? Why must I demand for my daily bread? Yes, Jesus said we should, but doesn't he know? I'll tell you why. The problem has never been with God. The problem has never been with God. The challenge most times is your relationship and your how you function with the angels that God has sent to walk with you. Now, the kingdom of heaven is in words. Yeah. The kingdom of heaven is in words. The operation of the kingdom of God on earth, the transmission is true thoughts that is expressed by words. So if God wants to establish whatever he wants to establish, God is a spirit. Now for that spirit to bring something into physical, into the physical, it has to be transmitted via words. And if it is transmitted via words, then a voice is needed. See? So now you are here God has already given the angels charge consigning you. But here is our relationship with the angel. He gave us his spirit. God gave us his spirit. Now what do we do with the Holy Spirit? Jesus said the Holy Spirit will guide us into all truths. Now understand something. Truth already exists. Truth is not being formed now. See? We are not trying to establish the truth today. No, truth already exists. Now the work of the Holy Spirit is to take us and begin to guide us step by step into that truth that already exists. So now the angels already have your script, which is truth. Everything about your life has been written in heaven. Yeah, that's the truth and you better believe it. And because it is written in heaven, God has handed this thing over to the angels that walk with you. But you see, at each point where the angels are to deliver, you are to activate them with what? Words. Where do you get those words from? From him. So at the time, the Holy Spirit put words in your heart. And then when he puts what's, what's in your heart, Jesus said, whatever I tell you in the ear, shout it on the house top. Why? Is it that he wants it to be loud? Not necessarily so. Because he wants your angels to hear that it is time. So when the Lord said, hey, start leading my children to make a demand for their daily bread. Now, when you make that demand, you are activating the angels and because you activate the angels the next thing you need to learn is now how to position yourself to receive because you may ask and God will answer but if you don't know how to position yourself to receive that becomes another problem praise God now I have to clear that now that this is why we make that demand not because God does not know already but you see the angels are activated by our words, by our voice. Praise God. Now then, I was sharing something with you about testimony, how God establishes his testimony. And I said, the moment God begins to walk with you, that is what he does. He establishes his testimony. I'll give you an example from scriptures. Now, God met Abraham and promised him. Remember, God says, Abraham, leave your father's house to a land that I will show you. And God told him, look, I'm going to make you a great man and, and all this stuff. And Abraham obeyed him and left. And now remember, God just told him, I will bless you. I will make your name great. 
I will bless them that bless you, and I will curse them that curse you. Okay, fine. I will bless you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. So God has spoken. Now, that word that God spoke to Abraham was what? He was establishing his testimony with Abraham. What testimony? The testimony of the blesser. The testimony of um, inheriting a blessing. So, Abraham began to notice that the season of farming, what do I do? Get into this place, tell them this and tell them that. And then he will go and tell them. And then the next thing you see, he's coming out with some good treasure. Praise God. He comes out with great treasures. And wow, wow. Just like that. Yes, just like that. What was God doing? He was establishing a testimony in Abraham. A testimony of being he as the blesser praise god so so that was abraham's life abraham now begin to understand that whoa god blesses god blesses god blesses praise god that is the testimony but now that could have all died with abraham but god did something to prolong that testimony. Now, this is the point you need to follow carefully. So what did God do? Abraham went for this war and he rescued his nephew Lot and everybody that was captured when the invaders came. And then Abraham, on his way back with all the goods and the people and everything, he met a man named Melchizedek. And the Bible says Melchizedek was the priest of the Most High God. Now, the job of the priest is to keep order. He, he had minister over the sanctuary of God. Now, what does it mean to administer in the sanctuary of God. He keeps covenant with God. So a priest will intercede. Why will he intercede? Because he knows truth. Are you following me? Because he knows truth. And then a priest will tell you, act this way and act this way, and God will keep his blessing working in your life. That's the job of a priest. So a priest will teach truth. Praise God. So Abraham met Melchizedek. And Melchizedek said something to him. He says, Abraham, he said, yes, sir. I want to tell you something. Now, Abraham was a blessed man already. I want you to understand that. God had blessed him because he obeyed the Lord. And God says, look, Abraham, this is what you are going to begin to do from henceforth. So what is it? You are going to start tithing. Said, What's that? I'll tell you. Everything you get and you consider that God helped you to get that, you are going to take a tenth of it and you will give it to the Lord. So you separate it as the Lord's. It belongs to God. And you're going to say, wow. Okay, I'm going to start right away. He said, oh, good. So Abraham separated a tenth of all the things that he had with him. And then, after that, Melchizedek said something to him. He says, now listen. You are not going to take anything else from all these goods that you got. I said, why? I'll tell you why. Because you see, I'm the one who blesses you. And because I'm the one who blesses you, I choose where your blessing comes from. So now, I don't want your blessing to be associated with the king of Sodom. Hmm. Okay. So would you obey me? Yes, I will obey you. Now, Abraham, I want you to lift up your right hand. Abraham did. He said, say after me. He said, okay, I'm ready. I will not, I will not take even a shoelace, even a shoelace from all these goods. From all these goods. Not even a shoelace. No, nothing. Understood? Yes, sir. Now, what was that? Because Abraham 
was a blessed man, which is a testimony. God had to what? Appoint a law where that blessing is concerned. Now here's the point. This law is not just for Abraham. This law is what Abraham is going to teach his children. And he will teach his children. And he will teach his children that they keep the law. Now, in keeping the law, they will remember the testimony. Are you following me? God established the law. Now, talking about Abraham now. God established the law of tithing because he, he commanded Abraham. That's why it became a law. So God established the law of tithing. Now, I know people say it is the Ten Commandment and that is the law. Come on now. A law is every command. When someone gives a command, it's a law. See? Now, now there are laws for today. There are commands, sorry. There are commands for today. But there are commands for a lifetime. Now, once it's a command that is that goes beyond you, it becomes a law. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, tithing was not just a command for Abraham. Tithing was a law. He, that, you see, he appointed a law. So, he said, Abraham, you will, you will begin to tithe. All right, sir. And Abraham obeyed the Lord and God kept blessing him and blessing him and blessing him. Now I've heard people who say um, the, the, the Melchizedek was a natural king that existed. I wonder where they get all those things from. I think it's just a function of their imagination. They just think, why would somebody... I had a discussion one time with a pastor and he was trying to tell me, no, Melchizedek was... I said, I don't get it. Is it that you can't believe that God used to manifest himself as a man, as in shows up physically or what? And he went on, how, how, how can you say God manifests himself physically? I said, I don't get it. Do you read the Bible? He said, yeah. And I showed him places where God did that. And he was, he was busy trying to, I, I, I began to, wait, do we have realists? That, I mean, you know, not, not just realists, I'll call them Sadducees. Yeah, Sadducees, because they don't believe in anything spirit. They just believe everything is physical. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, we, we, we have them in our army. So it's difficult to believe that God can show up as a human being and, and, and show up and introduce himself. Oh, I'm the priest of the Most High God, Abraham. See, so, and then now you, you find Jacob. You remember Jacob. Now the Bible did not tell us anything that has to do with tithe with Isaac. And that's understandable because the Bible is written in summary. The Bible cannot tell you every detail. <laughs> if every detail is going to be written, <laughs> how, how big that book is going to be, you understand? So now, but then we find Abraham's grandson, Jacob, talking about tithe. And guess what he said? He said, Lord, if you are going to bless me indeed, then I'm going to tithe. Now, who taught him that? Who taught him that the titan is connected to the blessing? Who taught him that? The law that was passed down from his grandfather. Obviously, Isaac must have known about the titan and was a titan. Obviously. So he must have taught his children. So now Isaac stood there and said, Lord, if you're going... And, and guess, guess how you knew Melchizedek was even the Lord. If Melchizedek was a man, Jacob would not be promising God that he will give him, God, his tithe. You understand? So, so they understood perfectly that this is what tithing is all about. So Jacob said, if you're going to bless me indeed, this is what I'm going to do. I vow I'm going to give a tithe. And God didn't say, nah, 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 Jacob, you don't tithe to me. You tithe. No, no, no. When he showed up, he said, hey, 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 I am the God of Bethel where you made a vow. It's good. Because you remember you're supposed to tithe to me. That's what he was telling me. Praise God. So, so now, that law of tithe, that was how the law of tithing came about. It came because God established the blessing, the testimony of the blessing in Abraham. And because of that blessing, to keep that blessing working in their whole lineage, God established the law of tithing. 
Are you getting this now? So that was the purpose of the law of tithing because of the testimony of the blessing. Anyone who keeps the law. Now, you, you, you can command them to keep the law. You can teach them to keep the law. But the moment they begin to keep the law, you don't forget to teach them of the blessing. Because sometimes people just keep the law and then they don't know why they keep the law. You keep the law because of the blessing. Praise God. Our time is up. You know, this is time becoming too short. Oh, praise God. Oh, that's, that, that's how the, 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 the blessing is. When you're on it, you don't want to leave it. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I pray for you today. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray the understanding of God's word is hitting your spirit. And you are growing and being established in the truth. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.